Hello everyone and welcome to uh, Drawing Bigfoot. It's been a while but um, I'm so glad that we are back doing this. Um, of course with me as usual is our resident artist Larry Batson. How are you doing Larry? I'm better than a bucket load of termites at a toothpick factory. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting place to be. Yeah. Um, that's good to hear anyway. <laughs> And our guest tonight uh, is Austin. Austin, you're coming through. You're around uh, Indiana, is it? Near, near, near Larry. Is yeah, it? yeah. I'm just uh, about an hour away from Larry. So, okay. if, you know, I'll Maybe. go ahead. My my co-star over here is my four-year-old. You'll see him <laughs> running in and out back spinning, here. But... Spinning on the chair in the background. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's never boring right. over here. Cool. Uh, that's what we want. Um, so, um, Austin, I, I, we really haven't spoke very much. I mean, I, and I don't know about your encounter, but basically, um, Larry's going to draw um, from your description uh, of the Bigfoot that you saw. And uh, even I don't know your encounter, so it's going to be very interesting. If you can kind of give us a brief outline of what happened. Larry will get into the drawing, and then we can go into more detail as we're going along. All right, that sounds good. Cool. Um, you want me to go ahead and just jump right yeah. into the story? Jump right in. Tell us how you, where you were, you know, you know what, what you were doing that day, and, and and what happened. And then we could go into a lot more detail as Larry's drawing. Sure. sure. Um, so this happened. It would have been. Um, I think my son was just a, a year, my oldest son was just a year or two old. So it would have been right around 2011, maybe 12 uh, at the latest. Um, but it was just south of Larry and I down in uh, Bloomington, Indiana, Monroe County, um, just about five miles west of town. Uh, my ex-wife and I, uh, we lucked into this rental property that sat on about 375 acres um, 275 acres was wooded. Um, so I, you know, did a fair bit of, of hunting out there, uh, especially, you know, whitetail deer. Um, and, and my encounter, uh, happened during hunting season. Uh, I was actually out on the property, um, and, and I was in my tree stand and I had already had, um, uh, filled my doe tag and I was working patiently on a very large buck uh, that was on the property and just always seemed to be out of reach or just the wrong time, just always missed, um, you know, with, with this uh, large deer. So I was being patient, trying to uh, hopeful that I was going to get a, a chance to, to take this buck and um, you know, a doe had walked past my stand and knowing that I'd already had my doe, uh, I, you know, I just let her go and, uh, she was getting about, uh, somewhere 30, 40, 50 yards up in front of me and started kind of acting funny. Um, she was wanting to continue on the path that she was going. Um, but it seemed like she was wanting to turn back around, but was, and it was weird. It's even hard to describe because I've never seen one act like it. It just seemed like she was being pulled uh, in this direction that she didn't really want to go. And uh, so it's kind of odd to, to see her behave like that. But, you know, she got ended up getting about uh, 125 to 150 yards uh, up in front of me. And I had been seeing some kind of uh, rustling through some thick brush up in that area didn't think much of it uh but as this doe uh, got near that area this creature just lunged out and punched this doe right in the ribs knocked wow. the doe down and her you know she was trying to scramble her legs were kicking trying to get back to her feet but before she even could and it happened so quickly um uh, this this creature that was uh, undoubtedly a, a sasquatch you know, grabbed her by the legs and swung her up against a tree and, and continued to just beat her to death. It was, um, you know, and I was watching through the scope of my gun, um, got a very good look at this thing. So it was, it was a moment I, I was always, I've always been very open-minded with, uh, you know, cryptids and, 
uh, the supernatural and, and those types of things. But it's a it's a different thing whenever you go from being a believer to a knower. You know, it's a it's a life changing thing. Yeah, and, and quite a thing to see. I mean, you know, something being killed like that and yeah. processing what's killing it. Um, yeah, just it the feels power like that. It. You know, it, it was unreal, and it just kind of once the the dough was down and and obviously dead. Um, this thing let out this scream that, you know, I can still he hear and, and feel kind of get goosebumps, you know, thinking about it. But and then it just scooped it up with one arm and off it went. Wow. Did, did it notice you? It must I, I'm pretty sure it did. When it screamed, it was looking up my way. I just don't think it cared that I was there because it was it was getting a meal. Yeah. Yeah. When you say she was being like forced, do you think there was more around her and she didn't know which way to go? You know, I, I that's a great question. I've never even thought about it like that. It was, you know, I've read and, and heard some stories about um, what's the, what's the, gosh, what's the word I'm looking for, Larry? The infrasound, is that right? Right. I yeah. heard some things oh, like that. Oh, right. Initially, I kind of like maybe wondered if there was something to that. That seems sounds weird to say. It seems a little bit out there, but you know, I don't know <laughs> what was happening. But it was just weird that it was obviously wanting to turn back around, but it just couldn't. It would it would start to, and then just kind of I don't know. It looked like something was dragging it. You know, had had a hold of it and was forcing it there. But that's that's a great theory right there. I, I never even thought that maybe there were more around there uh, at the time. Uh, I didn't see anything out of the norm, out of uh, the ordinary in other directions. But that that's an excellent question. I, I've always thought that I always said that if there's one you see one, there's two, three, four you don't see. Yeah, and and Larry, as I told, I know we've talked about this briefly before. Um, uh, and shared my story on your your Facebook show with you. But uh, when I first moved into the the place, I kind of walked the property and had found some structures that looked like little huts. Uh, but the family, we knew the family that was there before, and they had four or five children. I just kind of attributed it to that. Uh, but I later, you know, doing research and everything, had found you know some some structures around the internet that people have found that looked really close to what I had found um, that supposed Sasquatches have built. So uh, it was an interesting, interesting time, uh, interesting property to be on for sure. Yeah. What was it like walking back to your vehicle? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it, it, I was probably just a couple hundred yards away from the house. I had walked straight from the house back to my tree stand so I didn't even have the safety of a vehicle to get to to get back home. You know, I was on foot getting home and uh, I was in no hurry to come down after seeing the power of this thing. And, you know, the how intimidating it was that I wanted to make good and sure that this thing was gone and was nowhere in my vicinity before coming down out of that tree stand. But truth be told. If it wanted me out of that tree stand, it would have had no problem <laughs> ripping the tree stand down and and, and getting me. Yeah, that's true. That's a very scary, you know, account. And like I said, the, the, you know, trying to get back to your vehicle and all that must have been yeah. um, quite a, an encounter. Um, well, look, let's get into the drawing. Um, how, how big, how tall do you think it was? It was every bit of seven feet, um, just based on, you know, I had kind of ventured back down that way later on, much later on, um, to kind of gauge that uh, based on the tree and the, you know, some limbs around there, every bit of seven feet tall, if not eight. Wow. Uh, ma male or female, could you tell? Uh, I couldn't really tell that. Um, I would assume male, you know, based on just the muscle mass of the thing. But, you know, I didn't see any identifying features of of either or. But um, very hairy, uh, you know, covered everywhere, head to toe. So 
Right. Interesting. That that's one of the most popular questions that women will ask on this. Uh, Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Can you tell whether it was a male or female? Hint. Well, hint. Hint. It's right. interesting to know, but yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you're almost there. Ah, uh, pretty close, huh? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Well, um, that means something else is going to go wrong. So basically, Austin, Larry will just talk you through what 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 he wants you to describe. Sure. Uh, I guess he'll probably start. I don't know what the, the shape of the head, but I'll let him um, um, t take you through it. Well, let's, okay. she's right. Let's just do that. What what was the, what was the top of the head? What did it look like? The top of the head, um, not necessarily a crest. I couldn't tell if um, maybe it was just the fur, mm -hmm. uh, but kind of came to. It wasn't you know entirely round or or blockish. It, it seemed to kind of come to a little bit of a uh, a cresting point. Okay. Now, any part of this drawing that I you don't agree with what I'm doing, tell me, because you you know. Well, you know, I can guarantee you'll do a hell of a lot better job than what I will, brother. No. <laughs> uh -huh. I my my artistic skill stops at stick figures, I believe. Wow. You need to watch some of Larry's um, drawing classes, some of his art classes. Uh, you'll be drawing in no time. I would yeah. love to uh, to get that, uh, develop that skill for sure. Mm. Is that close, or can you see it? That yeah, I can see it there. Uh, okay, but I would go just a little bit, uh, a little bit wider, wider on the uh, the sides. Not not much. You got the top of the head about right. Just um, just a, a little bit more mass to it. Okay. Hello to everyone in the chat. I don't think I said hello to everyone in the chat, but I hope you're all doing all right uh, tonight. Um, right. I'm gonna do this. Uh, closer. There we go. Yeah. Did you notice the brow ridge? Yes, I did. How would, was, it, was it pronounced or was it? You know, it was. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. It was pretty pronounced. Okay, let's uh, tell you what we'll do. I want to start move my pencil from the top of the head down, and the best of your memory, just tell me where to stop with the brow ridge to run across. Okay, I'll go. I'll go real slow. That right there. Okay. How, how thick do you think it was? I moved my pencil down. Well, hold on here. That would pro I would probably put that at the um, that mark that you've made there. Yeah. That would probably be the the bottom based on your. Oh, the bottom. Uh, yeah, I would probably put that at the bottom there. So if you want to come up, I'll stop you. Okay. That right there. Was it like curved or was it straight across or a uh, slight curve? Okay. Okay. My co-star here is shutting the lights off on me. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need any critics tonight. <laughs> <laughs> What color was the fur? What was the general kind of color would you say it was? It was a um, kind of a reddish brown, kind of had a, it, it was dark brown, but had, you know, some uh, copper tint to it. Mm. Interesting. Is that close? Yeah, that's spot on, Larry. Oh, my God. Doing good tonight. Mm. I know. I think it's that vacation I've been on. Oh, <laughs> that'll do it. Um, the eyes were they large or what, what, how would you describe them? Yeah, they were large. Um, not uh, 
you know, not entirely very close together by any means, but okay. uh, they were definitely larger than human eyes. The, Sorry, yeah. Larry. No, it's all right. Uh, yeah. More circular than, than um, uh, oval. Oval, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, what, in this vicinity for the one on the left? Yeah. I don't know if Larry said, but if you're not happy with any of it, if you think anything's out, just just tell yeah. him. And um, yeah, that that looks good, Larry. Oh, God. yeah, so far oh, so what good. The, what, what have I done? I didn't go to church Sunday. I didn't. I didn't do any <laughs> of things. What's that going on here? Shout out that communion. <laughs> So when it punched this dough, do you think it broke its ribs straight away? I mean, what was the force of that? Oh, there, that there's impact. no doubt that the uh, the ribs had to have been shattered. Yeah, it, it couldn't even get back to its feet. It was the damage had been done for sure. Wow, is that is that eye too far over? Just a tad bit. I thought so. I'll bring you up a bit bigger because it's a little bit light still. Oops, what have I done? Um, He's drawing. Is that better? Yeah, that's a little bit closer there. If uh, as we get to the nose and everything, uh, I may have you go back there. We'll, we'll see how the nose turns out. I'll trust your artistic skill set as we move forward here. Oh my god! <laughs> Tell him before we start shading in. <laughs> if, you, if you have to change anything, yeah. Uh, So before this encounter, where were you at with Bigfoot? Were you aware of it or heard about it or just? So like yeah, I had uh, you know was a fan of some of the shows, as ridiculous as some of them seem to be. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't mean any disrespect to some of those people, but disrespect. Some disrespect. of them just seemed a, a little bit hokey. But um, always been a believer in them. And then, you know, we had heard some things, my ex-wife and I um, had heard some noises. And then, of course, as I said, had had saw, um, you know, some of those structures out there. Uh, there were three of them, uh, as a matter of fact, um, in the uh, in the woods. So we were kind of wondering um, to ourselves if if there was something out there. And then I, I found out this day for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what do you feel about the the structures? Do you think they're making them? And, and I, what do you think I, they're I think so. You know, like um, like I said, you know, at my first thought, whenever we first moved in there, I mean, within the first week, I had walked the property and found these uh, structures. So my original thought was it must have been one of the the kids from the family that lived there before. Maybe they had been out in the uh, in the woods and messing around or building forts or whatever. And, um, you know, the last thing I thought was there was going to be, you know, a Sasquatch or multiple Sasquatches on, the, on the property. Uh, but they were interwoven. The, the sticks uh, of the structures were all interwoven. It was a very deliberate design. Um, very well built, you know, so I, the last thing I thought was it was some sort of animal, but, um, yeah, it was very interesting. I wish I had taken pictures of it. I, like I said, I just attributed it to the the family before us uh, potentially doing it. Yeah. Did you ask them why they moved? Yeah. Well, I knew why. Um, no. They were just it, 
the the family was splitting up unfortunately they're oh, going well. through a divorce and and uh, relocating to at least the the dad was uh, relocating to Iowa oh well, well. okay uh describe the nose for me Austin sure um so it was quite a bit wider um it did protrude from the face a little bit it wasn't entirely flat mm-hmm. like you know like a, a gorilla nose it protruded a little bit but it had that width of of an uh of like, like a gorilla or um you know some type of primate like that gotcha I'm, well I'm gonna, I'm gonna move my uh, pencil down from the brow ridge here to and roughly stop want to stop at the bottom of its nose so we get the length correct okay Not right in there just slightly up there i think i may have may have missed you just a tad okay Now, Danielle, I'm curious over in, in your neck of the woods, do you guys have any uh, you know regular sightings over there? There's, there is a collection of like reports. I, I just don't keep up with it over here. Um, just because I've got enough fun with uh, Bigfoot Odyssey and my own channel. Um, I've, I'm not sure about the UK. You know, I personally, I feel it's a very you know small place. And um, I don't know. I've been out. I've had a look. I'm not saying I'm an expert. All right, you know, I I, I know what I'm looking for, but um, there's definitely reports of of things being seen. So who knows? You know, these these things could be absolutely everywhere. Um, I just think we'd be tripping over them a bit more than what people are say where where you live. Uh, you know, where there's sure. like vast amounts of lands that they can just disappear into and and here we're pretty limited uh, to just how far you can disappear i think if you you know reproducing you've got to be building up a small population of some sort and so i don't know i think we'll be seeing them more um but who knows maybe you know over here it's really such a strange subject to talk about I, generally you mention it and people just going like what you know they just haven't got a clue uh, and so it's not really talked about. In fact, it's not talked about. You know, it's not something people discuss over here. So maybe it's difficult for people to, um, you know, to, to share their encounters. Um, but we definitely have, uh, as I says, we have big cats over here that we shouldn't have. Um, and then there's plenty of reports about that, that those things. So who knows? Uh, the nose. How'd I do? How's the nose look, Larry? That looks really close. Oh my god, you're just, you're just on Praise the ball. The oh, I think Austin's quite good at describing as well. I yeah, think. that's it. it. It really helps. Um, yeah, it's just not always easy to, to translate, you know, what you're seeing onto into words and then onto paper. So, uh, I think you're doing really well tonight. Uh, Thank you, and I'm thank you for Austin. Thank uh, you for thanking yeah. me. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for thanking me. Thank, thank you guys for having me. Just thank yous yeah. all around. Do we thank have you. anybody in the uh, the chat asking any questions or anything? Uh, they probably will. I'm pretty sure some people got in here. I mean, I didn't realize you'd, you'd, you'd had that sort of encounter, and I'm sure some people have turned in late, but um, the detail of what happened – I'm sure people would love to hear again. If anyone's got any questions, put them in caps and um, I'll read them out frosting. I'm going to start from the bottom of the nose here to, to, to the top, to its lip. Okay. I'm going to go real, real slow here. Right there. Now, how would you describe the mouth? Uh, it was wide. Um, okay. 
Um, I would st- thin upper lip um, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, I got to look at its at its teeth. Um, seemed more square um, than oh. than. Oh, you uh, s- yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Larry. You saw the teeth then, huh? Yeah, whenever it opened its mouth to let out this uh, ungodly Straight. roar, you know. Yeah. Uh, how, how wide was the mouth? Uh, I would say right around it would probably with your drawing there would go towards the uh, the end of the eyes, the edge of the eyes. Okay. Now that roar, was it a roar of like triumph? Was it a roar of oh I've just got something to eat? Or was it a it, get away no. from you know, this is mine? Yeah, I, I think I, I always kind of attribute it to. Or I don't. I don't know if you guys watch. You know, like the UFC. You know, cage fighting type of thing. But much like a fighter does, you know, after a, a knockout victory type of thing, you know, the adrenaline that's going, and they yeah. they'll typically let out that type of a, a scream. Uh, it was much like that. It was. It, it was. I, I could feel it almost. It was. It was so loud. And from, uh, like I said, nearly 150 yards away, I, I could feel it in, in my body, in my bones. Wow. And and so how did it take it away exactly? It dragged it away or picked it up? It picked it up, yeah. It, um, you know, it beat it up against the tree. And, you know, once, the like I said, the, the doe was limp and lifeless, um, it just kind of picked it up under one arm and, walk back through the uh, the thick brush where it came from wow was oh, that good. mouth close yeah yeah very good larry so how long have you been deer hunting for so time? at this time uh at this time uh of my uh encounter um i had gone off and on um, I'd started hunting while I was in high school, um, kind of got of age there. So by this point I'd probably been hunting for six or seven years. Right. And, um, so obviously before had you ever had any feelings or never, you know, nothing to never had any sort of encounter or odd, uh, experienced any sort of odd behavior or anything of that nature before nothing that you can even connect the dots to now thinking back nothing. oh nope. maybe that mm. it's interesting isn't it how you can spend so long in the woods you know you know there's there's these people who spend years in the woods uh never see one some people who go for a hike for the first time and have an encounter uh and other people who, you know, like yourself, after so long, suddenly you see one. Um, it's like the look of the drawer, isn't it? Uh, or just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, you know, as I as I look back and, and recall the encounter, I remember uh, just like how quiet it was this particular morning. There were there were no no crickets. I got out there before uh, sunrise. <laughs> There was just it was very eerily quiet um, for you know that time of the year for that property that area I was, I was you know pretty comfortable being out there and I remember thinking that morning just how quiet it was it just seemed like nothing was there um, and, and then I just happened to have that doe come walking past that was acting so strange. Okay, so the math looks okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm going to go from the lip here down to the bottom of his chin, like we've done in the others. Out there. Okay. So quite a round head, this one. More, more round, you think, than... Yeah, uh, kind of kind of blockish. Did you get the impression it was a... And I know it's no one can tell what's a juvenile, what's an adult, but... Its demeanor in any way could could you have an idea of how old it, I know you can't tell how old it was but an an adult or 
Are you a teenager? It, kind yeah, of? that that's a really good uh, question, and uh, you know, it it just seemed to know exactly uh, exactly what it was doing. It, it, you know, I, I have to assume that it was um, much much older. It, there's no way that it could have been a, a juvenile. It had definitely done this before. Um, just the, the precision of that first initial strike and, and how quickly it all happened. Um, it, it had to, have, and how just the size of it, it had to have been an adult. Oh. Is, is that y'all right? No. So you were, you were probably more on, if you could kind of cut the medium, like a happy middle on the, uh, on that side there from, from the left side that you'd started. Okay. In other words, there wasn't any of this sticking out. Yeah. Okay. No jowls like we Americans have. <laughs> uh, so it feels like maybe it could have been herded in some way. That's just when you describe it, it's not quite knowing but being forced. It just makes me think of a, you know, a, a dog and a sheep. Yeah, yeah, kind of. You know, it was it was such strange behavior I'd never seen before out of uh, out of any deer. Now, um, I've never seen anything like it since. Uh, I've never seen a deer act like that before. And was it heavily like wooded around there? Lots of trees and yeah, or, or, or bush. Yeah, yeah. Now you're saying you also you kind of heard some rustling or felt like. There was something going on that you know. Obviously, it was that it was a Sasquatch. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right where it had happened, I had, you know, the the brush was so um, thick in this area and it was probably five to six feet tall. I could see there was obviously something in that that was working its way towards where this event happened. Um, my hope was that it was that big deer, you know, work that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, that buck that I had been waiting on, I was hoping it was going to pop out there, but um, it, it certainly was no deer. Are the jaws better? Yeah, that's better. Which, which side's the closest? The, uh, the left one is the closer one. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, it's a heck of an encounter, isn't it, to witness that and also be trying well, to process what you're seeing and thinking, are you in danger or, you know, what is yeah. this thing? Well, we we kind of discovered, Austin, on my Friday night Bigfoot show, and he said he had an encounter he'd like to tell us, and this was it. So yeah. it pretty much blew, blew me away. I thought, man, that's one of the – best ones and then we've talked about it i've, I've talked about it a little bit yeah but that's that, that's it yeah i don't think i've ever heard of an encounter like you know um with, with a deer with something seeing seeing something killing uh, a deer um uh, cynthia says why didn't you shoot the big four i, I don't it's a good idea is it to shoot something uh, like well for obviously if it had come closer to me and I felt like I was personally in danger, I would have done something to try to attempt to defend myself, but it was very locked in on the deer and I was, uh, I was hunting with a shotgun. So this thing, it was just out of range for what I would feel comfortable shooting at, um, at 150 yards with a, a 12 gauge shotgun. Yeah, I would. I would have done nothing but piss it off if I had taken a shot. Yeah, I mean, I don't imagine that's the first thing on your mind uh, when you perhaps. No, and, and like I said, I was kind of, I was watching it like through my through the scope of my gun to you know get a a good look at this thing, and uh, it was I was in shock. I had my phone on me, and it happened so quickly that it was like I the last thing I was thinking about was grab my phone and, and video this or, or take a picture of it. I was just in disbelief and I couldn't look away from the scope to, you know, it was just, it happened so quickly and, and registering and processing 
what I was seeing and what I was looking at, it was, you know, I, I always kind of wondered that myself when, when I've heard these stories, but being in that situation, I, I completely understand how those things, things happen. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people think, you know, you've got time to take photos, but like you say, probably how many seconds do you think it lasted the whole encounter from, you know, the, the dough arriving mm -hmm. and it being taken? No more than, 15 to 20 seconds but it was it was like i said the the abruptness of this thing flying out of this brush punching the deer scooping it up by the leg and beating it against the tree and it only took a couple of times and this thing was the just the power the the deer stood no chance and then it lets out this scream scoops the deer up and leaves and um uh, you know, the, like I said, you know, the last thing I wanted or thought about was grabbing my phone yeah, or making any sort of movement. I was pretty sure it saw me and knew I was there. Didn't care, but I didn't want to chance it <laughs> if it didn't see me. And, and yeah, it's, it's such a, uh, Absolutely. such a difficult yeah. thing to, to process and, you know, what should I do? What shouldn't I do? Um, mm -hmm. scenario there. Yeah. You can't be a Monday morning quarterback on these things. No, no. Ten years later, I can look back on the things I should have done. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the moment, it's pretty difficult. Yeah. Oh, I think you did the best thing. Just just stay there, not do anything. Well, yeah, there, I'm, I'm still here. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't complain about that. There is a lot of um, animals that we know exist that have hardly been photographed, like snow leopards, Sumatran tigers. In fact, they just discovered a type of monkey in Africa over an area that had been pretty well researched. And it, when the monkey wasn't like a marmoset, it was fairly, you know, it was fairly good size, 15, 20 pound animal. Okay. So all those arguments don't stand, stand up. Were the eyes, how would you describe the eyes? Um, you know, kind of a little bit more human in terms of, you know, the pupil and the iris and the, and those types of things, but it was um, like a brownish copperish color. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the, the size and everything as this drawing has progressed, you, you've got that down. Okay. Well, let's, uh, I'll go with the eyes here and I have a hunch of what you're, what you mean. Yeah. Large pupils, very, very black, but there is definitely some color in them. And any, any white, did you say that, sorry? Was there any white at all in the corners or? Yeah, maybe uh, just a, a, a touch of white in the in the corners, but not much. Yeah, okay. Um, so, you know, we hear sometimes that these things can, can move around on all fours. Do you think it could have been, when it leapt out, did it leap out? from a crouching position or just full on stood up. Yeah. It, it was almost as if it was down on all fours and just kind of sprung up in an upward trajectory and, and swinging at the same time. It was just the, the, the most insane thing that I've ever seen. Yeah. That's, the that, that's I mean, why I always say, you know, it just, it seemed like it had definitely done it before. It knew exactly what it was doing. It knew exactly how to make it make the kill. Um, so I, I fully believe it was a uh, an adult. Oh, I just hope it was quick for the deer. I'm sure. It yeah, no me. doubt about that. Yeah. Um, See, Nuge says, did you notice if it broke off the deer legs? Uh, it didn't at the time. Um, I'm sure the leg ended up broken as in terms of broken off. I didn't see that, you know, maybe that surely probably happened once it got back to wherever it took it. But, um, in the moment, no, it was, it was all intact. Uh, Danny church asks, uh, did the woods get quiet when you saw it? Was there, was there anything just before? No, it was, yeah. it was eerily quiet the entire morning. And, uh, it was, even more eerily quiet after it happened. There was no noise, this extreme amount of noise, very loud scream, and then extreme quiet again. Wow. 
Wow. So something was going on that day. It was a hunting day for the for the Sasquatch. Yeah, and it seemed like everything out there except for that doe knew it. And then once uh, once the doe was out there, I I always just just how strange it was acting. It was almost as if it knew, and it didn't want to go that way, but something was was forcing it. It was just it was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. But it was as if it knew something was up there that it didn't need to go to. Mm. Yeah, it just makes me think that there was others around there or some something just just not giving it a choice except one way or pu pushing it to one direction. It's uh, crazy, isn't it? Oh, I guarantee yeah. there was others around there. Mm. Mm. Well, they could just sit, can't they, for hours, probably. They just oh, sit and wait patiently. Got nothing else to do and, and wait for something to come along. I mean, I don't know, but. Yeah, I'm so fascinated in, uh, you know, in doing the, the research and everything and the, the different theories that are out there and how they travel as a pack and kind of a, a watchman type of thing. And while the other ones rest or, or however they go about it, there's so many interesting theories and. And yeah, thought. I was talking last night about this, like the tra you know traveling in in groups, and yet you only see one. Generally, right? It's like one picks the sh short straw or something, and like goes, oh, you know, okay, I'll uh, I'll make myself known to them. All right. I guess, you know, for anybody that, that joined us late or, um, or missed at the, at the beginning there, this, this sighting happened uh, in Bloomington, Indiana around, uh, 2011, 2012. So, so did you, have you, did you go back? Are you still hunting? Um, I haven't. So I, I relocated um, from that area up to the Indianapolis area uh, about three years ago. And I haven't I've just been so busy with with my career and everything that uh, I haven't even had time to go golfing. And that upsets me. <laughs> but <laughs> so I haven't been able to, to go hunting at all since I've moved up here. How was the effect of seeing what, what you saw? Did that have any impact on you? Yeah, yeah, it, it sure did. It was um, who, who did it, you it was tell life changing. I, I never went. Um, I never hunted on that property again. I, I like I said, I went back to uh, went back to that area a few months later to try to uh, gauge the size of it afterwards. But I did not hunt on that property anymore. I went. I hunted at my uh, my ex father in law's property, uh, but I never hunted on mine. Uh, we had a very large uh, pond out there that I loved to fish in, and I was even nervous about being out there to to even fish. Mm -hmm. So, um, who did you tell first about it? I told my wife at the time. Um, you know, it was she wasn't shocked because we had heard some noises and heard some. Um, some growls before that we'd never heard before. Uh, and, and we're pretty familiar with the animals that are in our area and, and those types of things. It was, it was nothing like we'd ever heard before. So she wasn't shocked uh, in what I told her that I saw. She was just more shocked that it happened. Right. And mm. everyone else, you know, that I, I told, uh, told my close friends and family about it. Um, and um, just, you know, the people that, that know me know, you know, it's not something that I would have made up, you know. So I, I never worried about any rid ridicule by any means because I'm very comfortable with what I saw. I, you know, if people don't believe it, whatever, that's completely on them. And I understand it to, to some extent, the skepticism of it. But um, as far as oh, me personally, I don't that. care. Yeah, it's yeah. great you had that support because, you know. A lot of people don't 
And and one of yeah, the hardest true. things is is having your friends and family laughing at you or saying, "Come on, you know." After yeah. knowing someone for so long, it's an insult, mm -hmm. I guess, when you know pe people don't believe you, and um, yeah. and then who do you tell after that? So uh, it's uh, a shame that you know. Well, we need to make more awareness, you know, to let people know that there's these things out there. Um, and let them know that there's somewhere to share their experience and, and to talk about it if they can't talk to anybody else. Because yeah. it's a bit of yeah, a weight, it's a, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful for uh, for Larry, for, you know, the platform that he provides people to, to share their encounters. And then, you know, this show here is fantastic. So thank you guys for, you know, bringing that awareness and, and help and talk about these things. Yeah, well, thanks to you too for for sharing it. You know, for coming on because not not a lot of people want to do that either. So, uh, you know, it's folks like you who will, co will come on and willing to, you know, show yourself, tell you tell your story, and um, it might just help someone. You don't know. Uh, it might encourage someone to come on or to get in touch, um, or at least to maybe think, yeah, there is something out there, and yeah. uh, just to be you know, aware more than anything. Because, I mean, I don't think there's anything you can actually do um, if you encounter one. All these encounters are so different, diverse. Um, you can't really plan it. And like you say, you know, originally you were watching the, those shows, which are kind of like, they, can, they are entertainment more than anything because you, they can't plan uh, a Bigfoot appearing. No, and it's just, you know, the odds of... Every single episode, there's this close call where they almost have it. It's like, come on, you know, what are the odds? Everywhere you go, you've got got something. But yeah, who knows? Maybe I'm the one that's wrong, and then they're, you know, it's a bit like Oak Island, isn't it? It's a bit like yeah. Oak Island, where you know they're, they're drawing you in, and you're hoping, you're just hoping this time they've actually got some. And I know that, um, that's one of my guilty season. pleasure shows too. I, yeah, <laughs> I tune back in every week. This is the one. Uh, they're they're going to get it. On it. I've given up on it. I can't <laughs> hope. Nine. Anymore. What is it? Nine seasons in. I'm still hook, line, and sinker waiting on it. <laughs> How much money have they spent on that? I no Way idea. too much. But, yeah. Um, no, it is fascinating. Let's see how Larry is doing with this. Starting to bring a bit of life to these drawings with the shading. We'll, we'll get into the hair once he's um, once he's got the. You said it was covered in hair, though. Even the face. The the face had some dry patches, but I mean it, the the or some uh, you know some skin patches there, especially you know around the the mouth a little bit. But um, mm -hmm. the body itself was was completely covered uh, with thick thick hair. Right. Did you notice anything in the hair? Uh, debris or kind of like yeah it you know, wasn't uh it wasn't a clean cut sasquatch yeah. by any means you know it had it had definitely been weathered and had had been out in the wild you know it was matted and you know there was some uh little bit of dirt in there and uh, i mean you could see the matted fur in, in certain uh certain areas of it did, did you smell anything did you pick up any odor from it no, um, no, I never did. I never got like you know that classic kind of skunk skunk ache description or anything like that. There's nothing, uh, nothing that stuck out as far as the smell. Um, I've got a couple of questions here. Um, two from Glenn Snyder. Uh, did the deer act like it was reacting to a phone call or, or any sort of call, maybe or? No, it was, it was no, the reaction of this deer was uh, nothing like I'd ever seen before that. Nothing that I had ever seen since it was, um, it was just the strangest thing. And it's so hard to describe, um, you know, for the listeners out there, I mean, I'll do the best that I can. It, it was just, it was 
it was walking in, it was walking south on the property and it would take a few steps and then it would like turn its neck and try to like get itself turned around but it was like it couldn't and it would take another couple of steps forward and then try to pull back and go back in a different way and that just kept doing that until eventually it got about you know 100 150 or so yards away from me and um it's just, it was just so strange. I just, I, like I said, I've never seen anything like it before or since. Yeah, I can't even imagine. But I bet it didn't even see it coming as well. Um, no, it seems once it got to where the attack happened, it had no chance. It had it. This this creature was shooting out and up. You know, like it was. Um, like it was on all fours and it came out so quickly and landed uh, the, that blow to the ribs so quick that the, the deer had no time to even react to it. And to see something that size and that massive move that fast, it was just astounding, mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Uh, the other question from Glenn was, was this place close to a national park? Or forest, not um, not super close. There's the Monroe County uh, or Monroe Morgan um, State Forest. Um, you know, probably how close would you say that the Monroe Forest is, Larry? To um, it's over on the uh, the opposite side of town, right between. Yeah. Um, it's halfway between Martinsville and Bloomington. Right. Right. Yeah, are so we kind we're, of stretching we're between them. Yeah, we're talking probably 15 to 20 miles or so um, from the forest. So not incredibly far by any means, but um, I'm pretty sure these things had made themselves a home on, on this property. Kevin, I see Kevin over here popped up and, and asked, do you think infrasound could have been affecting the deer? Uh, great question. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. That was my initial reaction. I'd never really known what to think about that theory that they could utilize infrasound, but um, that was the only thing that like made sense uh, based on how the, the doe was acting and uh, or reacting mm. to what was going on. That was my initial thought, but Dan, uh, Daniela brought it up earlier. Um, you know, potentially maybe this thing was kind of flanked from all sides and didn't know what to do or where to go. Um, so that's another theory there that I had never really thought about. It's fascinating, isn't it? Just what the possibilities of what this thing can do. And infrasound's not out of the question. If other creatures can do it, um, then there is a possibility maybe that they can. Um, but I don't know. It's uh... How's it looking? Um, like I said, much better than what mine would have come oh, out. Well. <laughs> no, it looks really good, Larry. Uh -huh. How long do you think one of these does could sustain one of these things when you're looking at the size of them? I think that's a meal for a couple of days or? Well, so if there were three, um, you know, based on the, the three structures that I found on the property, um, this doe probably would have fed the, I'd like I said, I have no, no idea of, you know, the frequency in which they eat, but I mean, mm -hmm. something like that size has to eat, would have to eat quite a bit. Um, I don't know. That's probably a question for a far more intelligent person than me, but um, well, uh, it's, I don't it's think not, it would have lasted long amongst the family of, of creatures this size. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anybody knows the answer, you know, and I, don't, I think it's too hard to work out. Some animals don't eat a lot and don't move a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe only eat one massive meal and then that's them for a few days. Who knows uh, how yeah. it works for them? Yeah. Um, but you would just think... That, that mass they've got, uh, you know, do they need loads of protein or are they just built like that and by design, 
um, just question after question, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely not the type of person that has the answers for sure. So I, I would good, uh, sound very arrogant if I came out throwing answers around here about something that I, I have no idea about. Yeah. Well, it's just all opinions, isn't it? Or just sure. possibilities. Um, Cause who knows? I've been saying, you know, we keep saying we don't have the answers, but maybe we have already stumbled on the answers and we just don't know it yet. Sure. Um, yeah. Cause we can kind of make this thing very complicated if we want to, um, when it could just be a simple creature doing its thing and we just don't, you know, we just can't yeah. study it. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe it just lives a simple life. Um, yeah, could very well be. You know, we have a tendency to overcomplicate things sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's coming together now, Larry. So, do you know if there's been any more sightings in that area? Did you have you ever looked into it? I have actually, I had never really looked into it before my encounter, but afterwards and in the years since, um, I was kind of surprised to to find quite a bit of activity down there. And I know uh, Larry has talked a little bit on his uh, Friday night shows of some of the encounters and reports that have come out of uh, that state forest there. Um, so that, that definitely made me feel a, a little bit even more validated, you know, if, if possible there, like I said, I was very confident in what I'd seen, but, um, the fact that other people were seeing it too and reporting it just kind of gave me a little bit more validation of, you know, at least, uh, at least it's not just me, you know, out here. Yeah. Oh no, no, it's not. And, and you figure that, uh, one out of every 50 people will talk about it afterwards. A lot of people just keep their mouth shut. Yep. Yeah, well, just don't have a place to talk about it. Just, just you just wonder how many people that don't use YouTube uh, or the internet and have just had encounters and just lived with them. It's um, who, who knows. Uh, I thought there was another question there. Might have missed. Did you notice anything else about it? Did you, were you able to take in any more detail? Um, you know, like I, I got a pretty good look at it in terms of um, its face and um, the body, the muscle mass and, and everything that you just, the, the size, especially in, in the chest and arms, um, you know, the, the muscle mass and the muscle uh, definition. Mm -hmm. Um, throughout his body was just, it was very, uh, very powerful, very intimidating. One look at it and you could, you could, uh, you know, the, the imagination would run wild of what something like that could do. And then seeing it with one hand, grab a full grown doe and swinging it effortlessly up against this tree was, <sighs> I mean, everything that you needed to know about uh, how strong these things are. Was it, what end was it holding when it was the back tough? legs okay mm. yeah i mean uh, anybody that's uh, that has hunted and you know made a kill of a full-grown deer even even a doe you know a full-grown doe it's uh, it can be a challenge to to maneuver the the dead weight and and get it out of the out of the woods and this thing was with one hand swinging it uh, with uh, an incredible amount of force and picked it up, scooped it up under one hand or one arm and uh, walked away and just effortless. Um, how much do you think the, the doe weighed roughly? Had to have been at least 150 pounds. It was, okay. it was a full grown uh, doe for sure. Yeah. Glenn says, we hear all the time it takes food and leave. Why not eat some before carrying it off? Maybe they store it. Maybe they don't eat stuff straight away. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. 
Well, well, in the wintertime, it wouldn't be any problem at all. You what, sorry, Larry? I said in the wintertime, it would have no problem at all. Yeah. And I've always said there's one food source that's in our forest that they could basically just walk around and snack on all the time, and that's possums. You know how many possums? I mean, easy animal yeah. to catch. There were uh, quite a bit of those out there on the property. My dog would very frequently drive me insane in the middle of the night chasing one up underneath my car. Huh. Yeah, there was no shortage of, of possums out there. Uh, Steve May makes a good point. I think it's possible that they keep uneaten portions of their kills in their dens and the rotting flesh gives them part of that their awful smell. Possible. Uh, yeah, I think anything's possible. Uh, I think, you know, if these things maybe do, you know, stay underground maybe or in caves and they've took food down there. I mean, I, I don't know if they process, they can store food, but because they you know, my dog will eat anything, no matter how old it is. I mean, just doesn't care. I wonder if there's a certain point where some creatures don't eat food or they know it's still good, you know, after a few weeks. I mean, I don't know if they can work that out. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh, you know, drying meat in the sun is, is one way of curing it, I guess. Um, I don't know, you know, squirrels do it, don't they? They take food back, they, um, well, the creatures do it, they, they do yeah. store food, so who knows? Um, well, I've always had the theory that uh, in certain parts of the country, like the Florida and in the northwestern United States, that they'll uh, they'll follow mountain lions, and when a mountain lion makes a kill. The Sasquatch just comes in and takes it away. Right. And uh, Well, nothing's going to stop it, is it? No. I imagine. Uh, Vault's in tonight. How are you doing, Vault? Just want to let everyone know I'm down here in Florida at the Green Swamp, and the camera that Kerry sent me uh, that I used on the 168 is what I'll be using. Thank you again. Well, you're very welcome. Hope you uh, capture something good when you're down there and you, you have a safe one. My guy Steve over here in the comment section sounding like uh, <laughs> sounding like we could be buddies with this sense of humor. No one's ever seen one buying a refrigerator. Coincidence. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, meat will last, you know, quite a while, won't it? If you keep it in the right conditions, uh, the more you age it, the better, the better it gets. Tigers bury their kills and go back later. Oh, right. Yeah. That's interesting. Larry, do you still have your uh, your tigers? Yeah. yeah. My goodness. What are you guys? Uh, no, I guess we probably uh, a topic or a discussion for another night there, but and the cost of feeding those things must be going through the roof right now. It is, and there's one way to help us out with that. That's that there big is. Foot, my, uh, Bigfoot cups. Yeah. There we it's, go. All exactly. handcrafted by my wife and I. There, uh, I, I uh, can't even hold it straight. Those are so cool. Excellent. <laughs> I can't even hold it straight. What's going on? Yeah. And we're just about caught up with our orders. So the people that have ordered them and haven't gotten is thinking, when are we going to get mine? It'll be really soon. Yeah. Oh, so. that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. If you want to, um, you know, donate to Larry's Wildlife Fund, because that's what it's all about, is uh, that's all Larry does. It's for, for his animals uh, and raise what he can. If you want to donate, his email address is lbatson at peoplepc.com. It's there in the ticker. Don't just donate, get something for it, get one of those mugs. Or get one of the uh, images, one of his, uh, you, you know, in any form that you want. Um, he's got lots of, oh, oh, that's Kerry's. Yeah, that print's available. Wow. Signed, that one. And uh, I'm very prepared tonight, Lavi. I know. What's wrong with me? 
<laughs> it's good. Oh, there's another one. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's uh, Gary Spikes uh, Jr. That's the first one. First one we did, I think. It is. It is the first yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, that's this great. lovely thing here. Oh, yeah. Katie. I think that's Katie G's. Yeah. 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 And uh, oh, and then the, one of the most popular ones we've done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Wow. It's oh, Ernie's, eyes. isn't it? Yeah, it's Ernie's blue eyed one. The blue eyed one. That looks amazing. Thank you. Those are available. Sign and new item. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, yeah. New item. Little squatches. Magnets. Oh, cute. Magnets. Yeah, they're the, there they are. You got little toes. Oh, magnets. Right, yeah. everyone. Yeah, that's um, right. That's Larry's email. Uh, if you want to donate, you can get him on uh, PayPal with that email address. Um, or better still, send him an email and get a mug get, or get a magnet or, uh, you know, an image or get all three. Um, but these are all unique. Uh, those mugs especially every single one is completely different in one way or another so uh you, you'll have a very special mug there um anything yeah. larry does is all handmade original uh no two the same and um, so you know it's nice to have something like that and we've got a young lady i call her the north america's the number one researcher She's in second grade and lives up in northern Indiana, and she got her a mug. And according to her family, she drinks no liquid. Now let's go through that mug. Wow. Annabelle? Annabelle. That's the one. She's famous. <laughs> she is. And every night or every Friday night when we're doing our show, they've got a campfire built, and they're sitting around the campfire listening to the show. Wow. Um. Uh, Vault says here the Indians didn't have, ref have uh, refrigerators or refrigerators. Uh, they dried it, and I have found meat hanging in trees before. So, uh, are they trying to dry it or what? What are they doing? Yeah, it's, it's possible, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> um, yeah, I've got to get a big, Bigfoot mug, Larry. Uh -huh. Let's sort something out. Um, Dorothy, how are you doing, Dorothy? Uh, do you have Sasquatch earrings for pierced ears? Mm. That could be uh, possible, I, be, I think. It could be by next week. Right, okay. Talk to Cheryl. Oh, right. Cheryl is the ceramics expert's expert. They would be cute, wouldn't they? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Her eyes will light up when she hears about that one. <laughs> um, Glenn, I think we've gone over this. What was? What would you say the raw sounded like? It was more. Uh, he's got his, got his dinner. Or oh, happy, triumphant kind of. Yeah, it was um, Glenn. It was. <laughs> It was a, a sound all of its own. It was so so guttural. But I kind of a, a attribute it like a, a UFC cage fighter after a big knockout, you know, letting out that uh, that adrenaline. Um, but it was just so forceful, so loud uh, that I could feel it from 150 yards away. Wow! Very strong. People say like vibrational, you know. Yeah. Let's get us back up here. So you didn't feel like you felt any effects of anything? You know, it's no. interesting. Infrasound was being used. But would it have affected you as well? <laughs> Again, I, had, I have no idea. It was... Yeah. I was, uh, I could see like that rustling, you know, up the, uh, ahead of me in the brush. And, and I was looking at this doe that was, you know, acting so strangely. Um, I didn't notice anything myself, uh, any, you know, physical um, uh, affection from or, or effects of um, 
anything going on around me, but um, I, I, like, who knows? I, I don't. Yeah. Who knows? I'm just throwing another question out there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not expecting people to to know. It's it's just fascinating. Was yeah. there was there hair on the chin? Yeah. Okay. Covered. Yeah. Um, kind of thin, uh, kind of scraggly around the the chin and uh, the top of the head there and around the sides. I think you've got it. Uh, you've got it pretty well down now. Uh, everything else was pretty well covered in fur, even uh, kind of the, the upper cheeks underneath the eyes, even a little yeah. bit. Yeah, a little right. bit of fur there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do have a big, uh, I've got a selection of um, Larry's, uh, maybe here. It's a few of I mean they're all so different but similar um and then really different you know but the eyes and the, the mouths really yeah are the, are the ones that Some some very human looking ones, some very, you know, strange. Yeah. Did it have a mustache? No, no. Uh, uh, ah. the, the upper lip was, was clear. Okay. Some of those drawings are just fantastic, fascinating. It's uh, it is almost like a, you know data collecting to, to yeah. some degree uh, in another form because uh, we hear a lot about the encounters. But we don't actually know what people are talking about, so I think it's a great idea to put it on paper, uh, an image. Um, it just takes it to a you know gives you a bit more of an idea of. What people are seeing, yeah, and how they are, kind of very different as well. Um, like I say, and and that's not because of area or location; they're just randomly different. I know we are, um, but some of these uh, differences are quite extreme, you know, on, on some of them. So, who knows what's going on? Um, Is that hair length about right? Uh, a little bit longer. Okay. Jamie's just asked me to about the window peaker. That is fantastic. That is a be a great poster, you know. Or I, I love that one. Just imagine Jamie's that. got one of those coming to him. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, what about your kids, um, Austin? What what do they think about before? They're all believers. Um, my oldest son uh, in particular, uh, him and I were going to go to uh, the Ohio Bigfoot Conference uh I think that was the COVID year, you know, once the pandemic started oh, right. that that got pushed back. But um, he's very much into it and, and loves watching all the shows and, and talking all the theories. Do they will, will they have a fear of going into the woods or are they quite open to seeing one of these things? They'll go, um, you know, accompanied by <laughs> by me or uh, or their mom or, or grandpa. But uh they're not going to go by themselves. No. No. Is that the right length with the hair? Yeah. Um, was it a bit longer? Maybe just a tad, but, you know, I, I, I'm trying to gauge by my own artistic skill, which is uh, slim to none. Uh, on how it looks, so I'll kind of let him go a little bit here and see 
how it's how it comes out. He may be right on. My my four year old in there is being unusually quiet, and that any parents probably know that's the sound of destruction in there somewhere. I can't can't wait to see what mess he's made for me in there. Do you need to go and check? Do you no, want to check? no, he'll, okay. he he can't be too much. Uh, yeah, no flour in the dishwasher or something like that. You, know? you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Maybe he's just watching a movie and settling down. Let's hope. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to be positive here. Yeah, I like it. I like the positive <laughs> attitude about it. Yeah, he's just sat quiet watching telly. <laughs> um, guys, if you've got any more questions, uh, Sandy MC says, Larry, have you ever drawn a Bigfoot that has had a moustache? Yeah. Have yeah. we done that or have you done one? I can't remember. Oh, it. I think we've done one. A, a real nice uh, Freddie Mercury mustache. Or? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, do they? Do they? I don't know if they have actually beards. It kind of comes at, normally around the jawline. Right. But I've never known. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, maybe, maybe tufts of hair, but full, full on beard. I'm not sure. Full on hair on the face so i don't think we've right. had um, there's always like a bit of patch of skin but but i don't recall a, a mustache um barbara some appear to have elvis hairstyles in south florida near alligator alley all right. <laughs> um. Resistant George, Jody, uh, do we think, or do you think, although maybe around, it's quite possible. Th these things can, though, like move without making any noise. And that's the scary thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, if someone could tiptoe through brush and briars and nothing, no noise. Uh, you know, I often think people are probably walking past these things and and never even know. Uh, I think there's just certain situations where they have to show themselves, where they feel like, they don't want you there or you, you know there's something going on or they've got young or food or um i had a fella tell me once he was in i think it was pennsylvania and he was leaning up against a tree sitting down taking a little cat nap and he just happened to wake up and there was two of them walking right by the tree and just walked right by him on into the woods wow and i don't think they even realized he was there right How's that hair length doing now, uh, Austin? That looks good, Larry. Okay. What do you think about uh, smell, Larry? Do you think things with short noses can't smell as well as something with a longer nose? No. How, how does it work? Do you think they have a good sense of smell like a, a yeah. hound dog? They yeah. do. They do. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they they can smell. Uh, well, I had a friend. She's passed from Pennsylvania, and uh, she had an area she put out apples and hang them from trees. And she says the strangest thing. She says if I took a firearm, even though I sat in my car by this old road, she said they wouldn't show up. But if she but if she went in there and didn't carry any weapons or anything, whether or anything unusual, they would. And she never could find anybody that was uh, had, was brave enough to walk this road with her. I said, oh, I wish I would have known her early, years earlier. I would. I said, I would have done that. That's fascinating, isn't it? Uh... <laughs> 
That's what he was doing. He was getting his candy bucket. Oh. A little okay. sugar before bedtime, you yeah, know. Get swinging on that chair. Mom will be home from work here in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so sugar can stay in up with him. <laughs> well, they're out of school, so what the heck? Yeah. Kevin's got an interesting question. Did he throw his head back when he roared? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you could say he threw it back, uh, letting out that scream, you know. Um, those How's that hair lake looking now? Perfect. Oh, good. These beans can do their spider crawl very fast, like on their fingers and toes. Could do. But they can move very fast, according to accounts. So, um, as someone also described um, one moving around more like it, it was in a squat position and it, 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 it didn't have its hands on the ground, but was just moving around, you know, on its back legs. So I guess you could get a bit of a spring from that, uh, spring up from that position. I think that's the most frightening thing about them, when somebody actually sees them move like that. And they realize yeah. how fast they can move, and that if they really did want them, that would be no problem. Well, there must be something going on in the hips for them to be able to adjust the legs, do you not, do you not think, or something... Got going on with the legs to get into that position, or do you think they just cr crawl around like we would try and do it on our hands and feet? I had someone to, I talked to about uh, something similar to that about them sleeping and that they'll sleep on their stomach. So if, if there's anything that you know they need to be check out, they just stand straight up. I mean, they said they said it's unbelievable to see that when they do that. So fast and so deliberate. Uh, sneezes in. Yeah, that, uh, I was actually looking at that. I don't know if anyone's seen the Mrs. Lucky Scorn Cape video where it's pulling the, the wood off the cypress tree and putting its hand into, I don't know if it's grubs or honey or whatever. If that is a genuine video, I think it is. When that thing stands up, it like it seems like it takes nothing for it to do that. You know the the power it's got. Um, it's scary. You yeah. know, it's that, that, that powerful, and they're out there. Here, drop your thing um, in here. Okay. You want your trash. I've got this kid trained right. He just yeah. gave me the Reese's. You know, the dad tax on oh. the candy. Yeah. Nice. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jamie asks, was there any spine noticeable as he walked away? Yes. Um, you could see the, you could see where his spine was, but you could also see how muscular um, his back was as it was walking away. Great question. Yeah. Did you, did you know it's like scars and stuff on its back or anything? No, uh, no. The the it was so covered in fur that um, you know any type of scars or, or anything was weren't visible from from my vantage point. But um, you could see the the matting in, in certain areas of the fur um, and then things like that. But no visible scarring or or blood or anything like that. And there, now, before I do this, there there is fur here, right? Correct. Okay. Um, I had a question then. Sorry. I know, and I have remembered it. It's okay. Um, could you notice, or did you notice, if it was more, uh, it was if it was dirtier on the front or the back? Uh, the front. Uh, and and the sides seem to be the uh, the dirtier spot there, but there was some some matting um, on the back of the legs, like uh, around like the hamstring area, um, mm -hmm. 
but there were, uh, you know, visibly much more, uh, much more dirt on the front and sides of it. And we kind of take it in the different shape of the leg. Like, did you notice how much longer the... Yeah, it, just the overall size of it was uh, impressive and, and intimidating. But And the the muscle definition in the legs and everything yeah, is just so huge. The size of it is just uh, amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's a great encounter, you know. Terrifying, but great. This reminds me of one I've seen before, uh, Larry. It does. Doesn't it? And I'm trying to think whose it is. I'm going to have a quick look and see. Um, but there was a similar one to this one. I wonder whose it was. Um, Ruger's got it right. He says one for dad, two for me, one for dad. <laughs> yeah, as long as I get uh, get a little Reese's thrown my way here and there, I'm I'll, I'm happy. Yeah, why not? It's a good deal, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Um. He knows how to work me. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> I'm just trying to find this one that I this is very similar to that one. And uh, let me have another look. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's this one actually. I can't quite. I can't remember whose this was. I will try and uh, see if we can get it up. Yeah. Then then Larry just kind of right down the uh, from about the corner of the eye there on the cheeks mm -hmm. down. Okay. And that would that'll be perfect. Like so? Yep. Jamie, thank you for, for sharing that. Again, Larry's contact information and um, all of that. He does such a fantastic job caring for those animals. So anything you guys can do, you know, please help him. Yeah, thanks, Austin. Um it's there at the bottom as well in the ticker. Yep. His email address, how to contact him. Of course, you can if you're on Facebook, you can find Larry Batson on. There's only one. Larry Batson on Facebook. Um, drop him a line and, and get one of those mugs um, or those little magnets. Maybe now the earrings. Uh, that would be uh, – I'd definitely have a pair of earrings. Uh, Glenn, again, asks, um, have you ever noticed lights or orbs? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, not on our property, but very close. Um, seen some uh, interesting things um, along that along those lines. Um, in the, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have another show for that, but that would be a, an interesting thing. Or. Um, whoever that was, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook as well. I'll be happy to to share that. Well, you've had quite a few paranormal experiences, haven't you? And, um, yeah. I know you're writing a book with your, your mom. Um, yes. Yeah, um, it is. Um, it has been something that we've dealt with our entire lives. The, the first 14 yeah. years of my life, I lived in a very active house. And uh, as you said, you know, we, we've been working on this book. Um, it is in the works right now and, and is being 
typed up uh, from the the publishing company. They're doing the typesetting, and uh, it should be out and available um, by September. Um, all true accounts. There's photographic evidence in there. We have um, not all of it is in there, but we're we're saving for the second one. But um, my uh, my mother has over 400 pictures of very clear some of the most compelling evidence that that's ever been caught. Wow. Um, well, you you're going to come on in existence um, on my channel, and we're we're gonna we've not arranged the date yet, but um, we'll get into that more um, over over there because uh, yeah. I'm definitely interested in the paranormal, and um, we can definitely have you back again on here anyway, and we can get into orbs and all sorts because uh, lots of people, not lots of people, but some people report seeing lights. Uh, when they have a Bigfoot encounter and orbs, and it's just interesting whether or not these things are connected or not. You know, I know nobody knows, of course, but um, it's interesting that there's uh, also this other side to Bigfoot that that people are experiencing more, you know, paranormal stuff. Uh, whether that's the right word, I don't know. Um, but there seems to be, you know, lots of different stuff going on. People are experiencing yeah, I, different things. Is that, you know, a frequency thing? Is that down to the person? Um, right. I, uh, uh, Danielle, I actually just sent you a few of the pictures that made it into into this book uh, on Facebook. So you have them whenever we do that uh, do that show. Oh. So, um, very, uh, very compelling evidence there. Very good, Larry. Very good. That is, um, that's very, very close to, to what I saw there. About as uh, close as you could get. Okay, let's tweak him. Is, did you capture that figure? You captured that figure in white. Is that what you Yes. Think? Yeah, that was the uh, the first day that she had the cameras up. Um, just a couple hours after the cameras were up. And she has not stopped capturing uh, photos oh, like that. Wow. And that last one looks like a very yeah. Old, it looks like a skeleton one. type of. It looks like it has a skeleton body. It's um, very strange. Wow, they're amazing. Thank you. Yep. Um. I can hear something. Just maybe could be sweetie wrappers, maybe candy wrappers or something. I could hear then and I'm not sure what it was. Um this is the one. This is possibly a bit similar in a way. I'm not sure if that's I don't think this is the one I'm looking for. Um Yeah, it's fairly see, close though, yeah. Yeah, let me just have another look through. Because I'm pretty pretty sure there's uh I think it's that one. Oh, it's rain. I think it's really raining really heavily. That's what I can hear. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, where are you at, Larry? I'm going to tweak it. Oh, you're in tweaking already. Cool. Kid, I said your nuts. <laughs> That's a big button. You say hi to everybody. Now you're gonna be shy. Okay. Are you gonna say hi? What, what's uh, what's your name? What's his name? Beckett. Say that again, sorry. Beckett. Beckett. Oh, it's an unusual name. It's an unusual kid, that's for sure. He's never yeah. <laughs> what do you What do you think about Bigfoot, Beckett? She's talking to you. You'll come up here and talk. You're shy, okay. He's shy, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
shy my butt. <laughs> Maybe next time. Yeah. We'll come on and uh, share his thoughts on everything. <laughs> wait for that. Uh, wait for that candy to kick in. He won't stop. <laughs> Uh, have you um are you experiencing any paranormal stuff now i have i have not in our home um since we relocated up here uh <laughs> there uh, but we do go on um uh, some overnight things we've gone down to uh waverly hills we, uh, sanatorium in uh, louisville kentucky uh, we go down there every year and do some um some paranormal research down there um and, and have had countless experiences there um but in my home here no uh, but my mother is currently dealing with that uh, every single day oh right wow that's uh i can't wait to get into that actually and uh i look forward to the to the book um yeah that was such a uh, a fun experience I've, I've never done it before i've never written a book um i had gone to school at, for creative writing and and done some screenplays and and won some awards in that but i've never done a book had no idea where to start but uh, uh, we lucked out and, and signed a great deal with a, a great publishing team and, and they've been fantastic to work with and very excited to see how it all turns out yeah yeah me too um well, I don't know if you, your mom would be willing to come on as well, but that would be. Oh, know. I'm sure she would uh, absolutely <laughs> love that. She's yeah. Got, uh, uh, she's got stories for, for days on, on some really uh, creepy things that have happened to her there. That would be great. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated. I always wonder how people cope, you know, deal with ongoing stuff. You know, yeah. if something happened in my house, I'd be like, out the door. <laughs> yeah. Think, you, you know, and people stay, don't they? They, I mean, I mean, I know there's maybe not a, a lot of choice sometimes, but um, it's fascinating if you're starting to study it as well. And, well, we'll get into it in the, on hidden existence, but. Um, <laughs> Are you sending that to me? No, almost. Okay. Um, um, Kath, um, Kathy, if you use uh, that email address that Jamie's put up, I'll put it up if you want to get in touch with Larry. That's his email address, lbatson at peoplepc.com. Uh, or you can find him on Facebook and send him a message there. I'm not sure if you can add him as a friend. Have you, Phil, are you maxed up now on your friends, Larry? No. Oh. No, there'll be some. I'll get I'll get some posts that I don't agree with, and my friends, are, you know, i got more room. Make everyone, every once in a while, make some more room. Yeah, cool. Okay, I'm going to go over there. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it's gone. Right, let's get us back on there. Um, so, yeah, he'll be, send, he'll be coming back on and, and sending the image over. Um, I think you did really well uh, with the description. It's not always that easy. No, it's 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 not. But uh, thank you guys, and, and especially to Larry for capturing that so well. Um, he's just absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, um, thank you guys for having me on. I greatly appreciated it, and thank you to everybody for tuning in and and asking such great questions. Yeah, well, we've not finished yet. Hang on, Larry's going to come back and and send okay. us um, an image. So just hang on there. Um, what was going to say? Um, yeah, um, Kathy, I hope you got that um, email. Um, what's great about Larry is, well, it's not great that he, he has Parkinson's, but he does amazing um, doing what he does uh, and still continuing to 
raise money and keep his animals and everything going. And this is like, you know, a challenge for him to do this. Uh, it's an exercise for him and he really enjoys um, doing these drawings. And uh, if you know anyone who's had a face-to-face -face, um, encounter, uh, tell them to get in touch with us. It's, um, it's not that easy finding people. Uh, we can't really make these shows up. Uh, we can't just get someone on it and make something up. We, we always bring, you know, a genuine um, encounter. So if you know anyone and, and they want to have a go at it, uh, let us know. Um, let me just see where... Kevin Park, you had dinner with Jeffrey Dahmer, did you? <laughs> <That's>, well, <laughs> let me talk about it. Yeah. Um, I was actually going to... Uh, I was just about to send a message to Carl Crew, who was um, played him uh, in the movie The Secrets of uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Have you sent me that? Oh, you have. Thank I you. have. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Right, let me just get it up here. Um. It was a great deal of fun tonight, uh, Austin. Wow. Oh, thank you so much, Larry. You are just you, you blow me away every time I see you on these things. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. <coughs> um, Mix that lemonade a little bit strong. <coughs> oh. Um, here we go. Okay, just give me one second. So here we go. He's tweaked. There you go, Austin. That is awesome. Thank you, man. That was uh, that was fun. And you are uh, amazing. The best at what you do. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of different stuff. It's amazing how it goes from the, from the start of them to, to this at the end. You know. I know. That's uh, I mean, compared to my own artistic skill, it's, it's <laughs> sometimes hard to to tell him. <laughs> where he's going just kind of gotta let it develop a little bit but um it's it's amazing to watch you do what you do oh thank you what made you draw yours did you want to put it on paper did you how long did it take you before you drew yours me mm. oh i've never attempted it that's 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 it would be a stick figure you know <laughs> I, I have zero <laughs> skill whatsoever oh, it can't be right. dangerous it can't be dangerous <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Jack, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate that. Yeah, everybody, please, if you want to help the channel out, uh, hit the like button and, and leave a comment if you don't mind. And that will really help uh, get the channel algorithms up and uh, we, we get more people to <laughs> see these shows and, and raise a bit more awareness about Bigfoot. Um, but I want to thank you, Austin, for coming on and sharing your encounter. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Um, and Beckett, of course, uh, yeah. doing his bit. Can't forget him. He's the star of the show. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Larry, thank you once oh. again for doing what you do. My pleasure. Amazingly well. Um, if anyone wants to donate, again, get yourself a mug or get one of those little magnets, uh, Bigfoot magnets. Have you got one? Well, oh, well, or uh, or, or or one of those a, images. Picture of Carrie Arnold. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. Carrie Arnold Sasquatch. Oh, uh, that's, a, that's a Sasquatch. I keep forgetting Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, guys. You know the <coughs> is there. Uh, thanks everyone for showing up. Uh, we'll be on tomorrow night. Uh, Wednesday encounters or researchers report. Not sure yet, but we will be here and. Um, once again, thanks, Austin. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you all.